So we can target what allowed you to get to this point. So now we have an answer. I mean, somebody might say, I don't know why my back hurts. And we go, okay, well, with our particular system, we go, well, you've hurt your ankle at some point and you're not uh, uh, communicating with the brain. We fix the ankle and the back gets away, it goes away. But what if you came in and say, how did I get this autoimmune condition? Um, I don't know. All we know is that we have it and what we can do to manage it, what we can do to dampen or support the immune system, depending on what particular area it is. Uh, with genetic testing, we can actually go find out what did you have that under the right circumstance allowed this to turn on and what can we do to manage that. I see great things with this, that uh, there can be a reversal of things that we could only use to manage. Now, you'll still be you'll still have to carry that around for the rest of your life. I don't think our world's going to change the nomenclature because once you have a disease, you have it for life. But if it's gone away and all the symptoms are gone, the blood tests are showing that there's nothing there and you feel great, so what? So the combination of genetic weaknesses, metal toxicities, infections, and other factors can lead to a ton of events, including neurological events. Um, and this is why our protocol is we're, we're really moving toward genetic testing because we want to identify the areas of what you're vulnerable for. So from there, we create a custom step-by-step -step process to help address these factors within your body. So when we do a particular genetic test, we get a thousand pages of this when we do saliva. What does that mean? It means nothing to me too, guys. I mean, I, I can go look up the gene. I know where to go and go find it. But when I get the thousand pages of this, it really doesn't do a whole lot. I needed to go into one of these particular uh, programs, and this is just one of several we use. Um, but you can see that this one on the right left, top left, COMT, the comp gene, and then over to the side, um, these are the dangerous alleles that you might have or the alleles that it express. This is what's expressed on the gene. And uh, this one particular color codes it, that's just fine. And so it gives us a plus plus for that, meaning that uh, there's an issue within that comp, and I threw mine in there just for fun, of that particular gene, where other ones are okay. And so when we come up with that, we can come down and we can see that um, we got a problem on this comp gene. We know then with the VRD tag. And um, so on the bottom of this, we go read, well, what comes off of that? Well, I might have trouble with uh, um, short-term memory or planning or abstract or emotion. Uh, I might not be able to break down estrogens. Um, uh, there might be irritability, hyperactivity, and normal behavior. I may be more sensitive to pain. I mean, I've been telling people that forever, but uh, there's there's some reality to it. I mean, it's not everything that's there, but uh, when we have that comp gene, now I can go, well, what am I going to do with that? So this is, um, we're, we will actually get this within my office as you come here, and each one of these little uh, purple circles is enzymes, enzymes that are um, for the genes what goes on there. And so if we were to uh, find things on there, I'll be able to tell you what goes with that gene as well. So back to this comp gene. So we can see that there's a comp gene and I have a, a VDR tag. And so if I'm negative on one and positive on the other, then I can take any type of B12. But if I'm, you know, it changes negative, negative, and then positive, positive, one positive, one negative on the comp gene, and then all positive, and then the different variants of the VDRs as well, which is it's a vitamin D receptor, by the way. Uh, depending on what I have, just one type of vitamin B and I, B12 might not work for me. It might have to be a different type or another type or a third type. And this is where going to the store and picking out a vitamin B12 makes it really difficult. And um, at least in our office, it makes it, uh, somebody asked me, is this okay? Well, you, you gave me a B12, but I went and got a B12. It's not the same thing. We're working with genes, and the way that we test uh, is not the same. It might be okay. I mean, it's not like you're going out and, um, you know, eating some fries and a uh, greasy hamburger because it still has a vitamin source to it, but I don't know if it's going to be worth any good to you until we actually have a gene test. So I believe that these chronic conditions, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, MS, autoimmune, cardiovascular, they're, they're multifactorial. I mean, I'll go back to this. These are all the different systems in the body. You have multiple ones when you end up with a disease. And so um, we go find the genetic problem. Uh, and there might be an exposure to an infectious agent that you weren't able to fight, fight off. You know, somebody, one person in the family gets something and nobody else does. Okay, um, I start looking at there's a gene issue. It's not just your immune system. There's something that's not allowing your immune system to work like the rest of your family. So we'd like to understand these contributing factors and pick the right tools to get you on the path for health and well-being. The predisposing genetics come from 
somewhere, even if you're related to someone, and it may not be autism, it may not be Parkinson's, it may not be chronic fatigue, it may have something or another inflammatory condition that's somewhat to that. So we don't want to just look at one condition, we want to look at the entire body, the genetics that are inherited, the familiar powder, this means every single person in today's society needs to be thinking about charting their own personal roadmap to health. What can you do to balance out that genetic system, all those big purple things on there to make sure that you function at your optimum? It's genetic testing. So um, we know that Alzheimer's is increasing at an incredible rate. So is chronic fatigue. I mean, kids have ADD, ADHD. We didn't. When I was a kid, you could have all the peanut butter you wanted in school. You can't have one at school now. Heck, we can not hardly have peanuts on half the planes that we're on. So things are changing, and this is all in the methylation world. I mean, um, um, I'll, I'll get to autism in just a minute, but what you gain from having your genes tested is my evaluation within this program is how we deal with chronic conditions. It's, it's, I want to make you the expert. This is what's going on, and this is what I'm doing to fix it. Um, and so I will share these tools with you. You'll have a printout, and you'll be able to, to show with your other doctor practitioner, I'm sure you're going to other ones, that's fine, that this is what's been tested on you, and this is what you have, and this is really based on science. We're not throwing something out there. This has been going on for years. So with the increase of Alzheimer's, which I noted before, um, it's becoming one of the leading causes of death in this country, and right now it's $150,000 a year to manage. Um, the majority of Americans do not have a year's worth of management, so what's going to happen to them? I, I don't I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it's bad that we can't do that. But for much, much less than that, we can a, prevent it, which would be ideal, or push it out year, five years, ten years, which is big for the family. I mean, what are you going to pass on to your children uh, from a big society? I mean, it, it's, it's good for the national debt as well. But in 1997, uh, children that were labeled as ADHD, which is Attention and Deficit Hydro Hyperactivity Disorder, had risen to 4.4 million. And just a few years later, it's close to 6 million. So now 1 in 10 children get this. Now, some of those might be, again, better diagnostic ability. Or um, there could be some teachers that just <laughs> get your kid tested. Um, but it is as it is increasing. So, you know, uh, if we put the two of those, they should balance each other out. So it is increasing. Um, in 2002, autism was 1 in 150 kids. In 2012, it was 1 in 88. And now it's about 1 in 50. Um, can you imagine that? I mean, my school had 30 kids in a classroom. And we had four classrooms per grade and six grades in there. And that's a lot of autistic kids. I don't recall even seeing an autistic kid. So the percentage is going up. And, and again, this comes to methylation. If the body is prepared, the parents have been taken care of, um, they should be able to pass the reverse genes onto the children and it should st stabilize them. Is it the vaccine? No. Is it the food? No. But it's a combination of that and the environment. So all of a sudden you have multiple uh, areas of the body can't methylate or uh, manage their genes and then you put some more stuff into them because again, vaccines have gone from like 5 to 10 then from 10 to 50. 50 is about 56, I think, is the last count, is what's recommended shots before the age of five right now, which is kind of a lot. But in a healthy human being, uh, you should be able to detoxify, but the healthy human being has a lot of environmental stuff coming into them. The diet's not good, and mom and dad um, passed on some uh, genes that weren't functioning right. These kids don't have a chance. So uh, this is where we start. We don't start by taking everybody to court, we start by fixing what the, the conditions are.